Have you ever wondered how someone ends up serving Jesus in another country? Stick around, and we'll talk about that with today's guest on Here at Home. Welcome to the Here at Home podcast, a podcast about the people here at McGregor, their stories, their ministry, and their love for Jesus. My name is Mark Bricker, and I'm your host for the Here at Home podcast. And joining me on today's podcast is Pat Schultz. Welcome to the show, Pat. Thank you very much. So glad to have you. In fact, I've really been looking forward to having you on the show. Now, I know that there are people listening that know you, but I also know there's going to be some people listening that don't know Pat so well. So Probably. give us a little bit of background so we can get to know Pat just okay. a little bit better. Well, my family originally came from Chicago, Illinois, and we moved to West Palm Beach, then we moved to Okeechobee. I raised my kids, four kids, in LaBelle, Florida. LaBelle, Florida. LaBelle, wow. Florida. And then moved to Fort Myers yeah. and wound up here in McGregor. At McGregor. The LaBelle Cowboys. Yes. I tell you what's interesting about your boys is when I meet somebody that is from LaBelle, and I know a few people from LaBelle, but I'll mention the Swopes, and they're like, oh, yeah, I know the Swope boys. Okay. So everybody uh, tends yes. to know them. Uh, and good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's all good. I'm right? sure it all, is. All good. I right. taught for over 30 years in LaBelle. Oh. So. In the public schools there? In the public oh, schools. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I know... Um, uh, Matt Davidson's mom yes. also just recently uh, stepped down, probably at least 30 years teaching Lynn, yes. yeah, for a long time. Yeah. Were you on the same school by any yes, chance? Yes, we were at oh, one yeah. time. I hopped from school to school. Okay. And um, yeah, we were on the same staff for a while. I did not know that. We oh, were that's... neighbors too. Oh, wow. Yes. Some good people come out of LaBelle, don't they? Really good people. Some good people out there. Down to earth. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I always like to ask folks uh, to share a little bit about how they came to know Christ. Because I think when we talk about what we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and really in missions and, and serving the Lord, uh, it all starts with a personal relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And so how did you come to know Christ? Well... I wasn't raised in a Christian home. Hmm. Um, my grandmother was a Christian and prayed for my dad, who happened to be the black sheep of the family. <laughs> so um, there happened to be a pastor that worked with my dad. My dad was a barber. And he began to talk to my dad and say, you know, talk about Jesus and, and hmm. evangelized him. Hmm. And he kept saying, can I come to Okeechobee and... Um, start, you know, have a, a worship center or just come for a, a church service once. And my dad would say, no, no, can't do it, can't do it. Eventually, he says, all right, we'll do it. I think it was just to get him off his back. So I remember riding my horse all through the neighborhood, giving out brochures about this meeting that this was going to yeah. take place. There were about 40 people. Uh, my dad never thought that Pastor Red would ever come back. That was going to be it. But he didn't. He was tenacious. Uh -huh. He kept coming back and coming back, and a church was started. Now, my dad and mom weren't Christians yet, and a revival service came to be. And I remember that service. I remember what pew I was sitting in and everything, and the preacher talked about hell. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I was going to go to hell if I didn't accept what Christ had done for me. Mm -hmm. And that began at age 12, my love for Jesus oh, wow. and how he changed. At 12, you don't, you haven't started a lot of bad habits, but my parents had. Mm -hmm. And I saw my family change and what Christ could do in a family. So your mom and dad both got saved too. They both got saved. Oh, wow. And they helped start this little church in Okeechobee. Mm. And it, it, that made a big impression on me throughout my life. I bet. So that's how I came to know Christ. I love the the first thing you said. You had a, a grandmother that was praying for yes. her son. Yes. Uh, yes. And that's that's the power of a of a praying mom or a grandmother or a grandfather. Yeah, yes. That influence. The power of prayer. Mm-hmm. 
Consistent Absolutely. power of prayer. Absolutely. Yes. That is so neat. I did not know that story. Uh-huh. I love hearing stuff like that. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I, I started off the uh, the podcast with, you know, how does somebody, you know, end up in another country serving Jesus? Well, that's where you found yourself at some point uh, yes. in another country serving yes. serving the Lord. What's the process that ends up, that, ends, that gets a person to that place? Because... I have a feeling a lot of people, even here at our church at McGregor, they, the missionaries come in and some of them from overseas and, and they, they hear what God's doing there. And maybe they wonder how, you know, is that person just like me? How did they end up in, in Zambia or in Guatemala or wherever the Lord has, has called them to serve? So I'd love for you to kind of walk us through that process with you and uh, give us some of those details and some of those moments of kind of when it first began to dawn on your heart until once you were overseas serving the Lord? Well, it began when I was a, a young child, mm. probably a, a young teenager, went to a youth uh, camp and heard the message and how people needed to hear the Lord. And I really felt like, go ye into all the nations. Mm. Um, and uh, that desire or burning in my heart was there. Sometimes I got off track, but it was there even when I was a child. Um, Before, when I went to college, I applied with Southern Baptist to go on a mission trip. They were taking college kids. I went to Miami um, for the summer and loved it. Um, Then you get busy getting married and raising kids, and once again, I got a little off track but felt that no matter what, just like that preacher with my dad, that you need to be a missionary wherever you are. That's right. And so when I was in the public school system, there were parents that I prayed with when their child was having trouble, um, invited others to, to church. Um, so I felt like I was a missionary even while I was working, and I would like everybody to do that, you know. Um, but you're raising a family, you're busy, you're, you know, just involved in church, stay involved in church, and do a variety of activities. Yeah. Um, it's that idea of living missionally uh, wherever God places you and puts right. you. Right. Yeah. Right. And for you, it was raising a family as well as the school. Yes. Um, It was kind of interesting because in LaBelle, we helped start a church there, also a church plant. And it was a very, had a lot of variety of people. Hmm. There were people from the Bahamas and Jamaica and Haiti and the Ecuador and just a variety of Very international feel, huh? Very, before it was popular, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Right. And... um, you did canvassing and you know it was being on mission Hmm. um some of my favorite memories there um, were some of the black ladies that came from jamaica or or the bahamas miss samuels could pray Hmm. she touched the throne of god when she prayed and I, i learned so much from her at her funeral um it was a lifestyle with her. It wasn't just a period of life, but it was a lifestyle. And I thought, I want to be like that. I want to finish well. Um, you know, we get busy in life, raising kids, working, and we don't think we can have time for uh, mission trips, Or, but we just need to do it. Mm. We just need to step out. So when you ask, when did you have an interest in uh, missions. I think it started when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you saw that from the very beginning, that the, the, the guy that came to start the yes. church there in Okeechobee. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you thought, wow, it had an impact yes. on my family. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. Correct. Correct. That's neat. So um, kind of fast forward a little bit there. And you mentioned this funeral. Did that, did that have any kind of challenge for you to say, hey, I don't want to waste any more time. I want to live my life uh, as this lady had? At one time in my life, uh, when I had an apartment, I had a redeem the time wall. And I had clocks from all over the world. 
because it reminded me to use the time effectively, whether, you know, whether you're 20 or 40 or 60, you know, to use the time that God has given you. Right. So, yes, um, the funerals were wonderful in in that little church mm. because they were so joyful because the person had lived a good life and knew Jesus and was going to a much better place. Right. So, yeah. so yeah. what was the uh, some of the next steps towards uh, God calling you to, to serve in in some type of full time ministry missions? Yeah. Well, um, I was approaching retirement. And I was thinking about retirement and did I want to play golf all the time or go swimming? And those are fun, you know, but I wanted to do something a little different. And so I started investigating. I talked to Wade quite a bit Mm -hmm. and he told me, you know, pick three agencies that maybe that you would like to, that that you find out about. And um, so I took that approach. I would take three agencies and, you know, go forward with them until I f- knew whether I was really going to go with them. I also went to... When you mean agencies, mission organizations. Mission yeah. organizations. Yeah. And I would just find out about them, where, what their biblical view was and where they were going and their qualifications. I tried the Southern Baptist. They had a master's program. Remember when they had mm-hmm. that? Um, and at that time, it was when everything was tanking in the, you know, so uh, so they kind of postponed that. And um, I started looking for conferences that talked about missions. There was the tent makers that's here in Fort Myers. And after I went to that, it was like, I thought everybody in McGregor ought to go because <laughs> it was no matter what your business is, you can use it for the Lord Jesus Christ to, as a ministry, right. whether it's your employees or the people that come in. But it really wasn't just for me. Um, and then I started really seriously looking at the different agencies. And have, um, Sim was one, um, and then Pioneers was another one that I looked at. And there were conferences that would have these different mission agencies, representatives to talk to, and I would go to those. The one thing I would suggest anybody that really is wondering whether they would like to go on missions is just take the first step. Do something. Don't just say, oh, I wish I would have. So you started exploring, basically, oh, checking out oh, yes. all kinds of different org- mission agencies and organizations yes. and uh, even talking be- to people. Yes. Even before that, I was going on uh, short-term missions. Right. And so I went to Guatemala twice and then went to Italy and Peru several times. Um, and when I would come home, I'd always th- wish it was longer. You know, it was never enough. <laughs> Want to stay you know? over there. Yes. Yeah. And so then I really started looking at the different agencies. Um, and this is all post-retirement? I'm still working. Okay, still working. Still working because I wanted to time it so that when I retired, I'd be ready to go. Ready to go. I love your thinking, by so, the way. It's awesome. <laughs> well, and there's a lot of planning to it, you <laughs> yeah. know. Um, I kind of knew that I wasn't good at languages. I really wasn't good at Spanish. And I didn't want to go to two or three years of... Language school. No, (laughs) no. I applied to teach overseas with China. Well, I was too old because they didn't want a retired person, you know. And so there were some bumps along the way. Um, And the interview process was just very thorough, Hmm. very thorough. You did a physical, you talked to a psychiatrist, you did a lot of inventory, and Hmm. it was very extensive. So um, I had, it was kind of funny, I went with Rafiki Foundation, which is in Africa, but before that, I I was going with Pioneers, and I really was going up to meet a team, and talk to them about the ministry, see how I fit in, if it was a good fit or not. Um, and on the way, Rafiki had a, a, a workshop that weekend. And oh, well, I'll, I'll just stop there first, and then I'll fly to Indiana. So I stopped at Rafiki, and I put the 
the brochure in my backpack and looked at them and they said, well, if you're thinking about going long term, why don't you just stay a little while? Okay, I'll stay and see what you have to say. So I stayed and they said, well, we really need you in Tanzania. If you could come, we'd love it. You know, well, I've already kind of talked to pioneers. Don't even go. I don't know, I have to go. <laughs> so I flew up to meet the team with pioneers and it was really fun and nice. The people were godly just didn't seem like the right fit. Hmm. And when I came back, uh, Rafiki called me right away and said, could we meet? And let me pray a little bit more about it. And if you're considering the mission field, prayer has to bathe your way. You have to um, just pray. Hmm. Because you're stepping out, it's like stepping out of an airplane. (laughs) You know, (laughs) you're like, what am I doing? I decided to go with Rafiki in mid-October, and I had retired and sold. I sold all everything at a yard sale wow. to earn my place because you have to earn your money, you know, get your support. Um, it sold the cars, everything. You know, you're just turning your back. You were all in. All in. You. I didn't even know where Tanzania was. <laughs> and I stepped on the plane and came to Detroit, flew from Detroit to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to uh, Tanzania. Wow. And that was my first step on. What year was that? Oh, you would have to say that when you, I, I went 2013 in December, right after Christmas and had all my support in those, from October to December, I had all the support in Raised order. Up. Wow. It, I, I mean, that was a God thing, mm. you know. Uh, then you get there and you think, what have I done? Now, what is your position? What are you, what are you gonna be doing? I'm a headmistress. So I have had education in a public school setting, but I was never an administrator. And so now you are. <laughs> and now I am. And the other missionary that w- flew in with me, I said, I don't know what to do. I'm kind of scared. And she said, it's an acting job. Just act like you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so the first day, I acted like I knew what I was doing. Wow. So <laughs> you're in charge of a school uh, in Tanzania, Af- yep. Africa, it's, and yep. never been an administrator before. No. But that's what God had called you to. and. Placed well, you? I saw how he prepared me for that mm. from even when I was a child all the way through teens and marriage and all of that, how he prepared me for that. Wow. Um, well, let me, let me, we'll talk a little bit more about what you did there. I want to back up because sure. I, for folks listening, especially if anybody's listening that, you know, maybe they are, you know, in the last, you know, 10 years of their working life, you know, they've still got a few more years before Mm -hmm. they are thinking of retiring or at least, you know, adjusting their, their work schedule. And, and that's where you, when you began really thinking about, okay, Mm -hmm. it's coming, there's going to be a point where I'm not going to be teaching school in the public schools anymore. God, what's next? Mm -hmm. And instead of thinking comfort, you thought of serving. Yes. Uh, How can God use me in that last, you know, years I can Mm -hmm. still I'm still healthy. I can still do things. How can mm-hmm. God use me in mm-hmm. that area? Which, to be honest, Pat, I don't think most Christians think that way, unfortunately. Uh, and so that's why I wanted you to be on here to share your story, because mm-hmm. I hope it challenges me, you know, because so many times people think I want to work hard. I want to work hard so then I can relax, play golf, see the world, do this, do that. And there's nothing wrong with those things, obviously. Mm-hmm. No. However, maybe, just maybe, God has something else. Yes. And that's the process you went through, right? Yes, yes. And I was still working in the local church. You know, I'm, you've got to work in your own. You can't expect to be an evangelist or a foreign missionary. Just, boom, I'm on the field, so now I'm going to do those things. You need to do that while you're here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I took classes so that I'd learn to evangelize, so that I would learn. I was involved in McGregor, yes. you know, with the kids' ministry or just a variety of things. Absolutely. So, um, you know, 
even though you're busy and you're working and you have those young children, you know, get involved in a ministry mm. and let God work through you. And let that become kind of the, the way of life for you yes. instead of thinking, well, maybe I'll do it someday. Well, yes. someday might never happen right. for a lot of people. Right. right. All right. So now let's go back to Tanzania, Okay. Uh, which by the way, they have good coffee coming out. They have Tanzania. great yes. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... You get there and you you kind of jump in with obviously with both feet. Yes. Tell us your experiences serving there in Africa. Um, I loved it, and I I think about it a lot and wish that I could go back again. Mm. You know, longing to go back. Um, my ministry wasn't with the orphans as much as I thought it was, which surprised me. A lot of times, God called me to different areas. And I'd be surprised by how he would work through me. Um, and I think he does that with everybody, you yes. know. Uh -huh. And sometimes you're just surprised. Well, um, my ministry happened to be more with the missionaries mm -hmm. to encourage them because they had been there a long time. And then also with the teachers when I came. These teachers did not have the best examples, so they would have maybe 90 kids in their classroom. Now, not at Rafiki, but in, the, in their public government school. Right. They would have 90 kids, wow. no supplies, no electricity, mm -hmm. um, and the way they disciplined would be to take a, a, a rod mm -hmm. and cane them. So when, they, when we hired them for Rafiki, um, we expected different things, but we had to train them. Right. And I just enjoyed watching the teachers grow, not only in their teaching profession, but also in their spiritual um, discipleship. I got to teach every morning, do a devotion. And I don't know how you feel like, even with this podcast, oh, no, I've got to do another podcast. But, um, Not at all. you know, every now and then I'd feel like, oh, I've got to do another devotion, you know, and they're not listening anyway, that kind of thing. But I remember one devotion that we had, and it, it was nothing special, really, you know, but God uses even those things, you know. Hmm. So I'm telling them, you know, you need to... You need to be morally and sexually pure. And this one teacher says, Ms. Schultz, I said, yes. And she said, I really know who you're talking about. You're talking about me. I'm living with my uh, girlfriend. We have one kid, and I'm going to get married since you said that. And another lady said, I'm a common law, common law wife, and I'm going to talk to my my." husband and we're going to get legally married wow and that was a nothing i mean just a little it, devotional just a little devotional and how it With changed a big impact yes and so i was guest of honor at that, that, <laughs> that wedding guy. yes wow well that's the neat thing about investing in the lives of those uh -oh. teachers because once you're gone their ministry yes. will continue on right and so who knows the impact that they've had based on things you did for them while you were there I, I, you know, I've been gone now four years, I think, and um, they're still there. Mm. So, do you stay in touch with? Them? Yes, I do. Oh, wow. Yes, I do. I don't want to undermine the other authority figure there, right? But I do like to keep in touch with them. Which I guess is fairly easy now with email and things yes. like that. Yeah, yes, that's yeah. wonderful. So. Now I know that you also experienced some heartache on the field as well. You want to share any with that? Uh, that? Yes, I yes, because that's part of it. You know, everything isn't always wonderful. That's right. Um, when you go on a mission field, sometimes, you know, you're faced with the fact that you're going to be away from family, you're going to be away from comforts from home, and you might get sick and you might even die. Um, I didn't expect that. I had uh, some dear friends that came to visit me in Tanzania, and they, this was their second trip. And Marilyn and Lois came, and while they were there, we made a list of all the things they wanted to do. The kids were on a break. Everything they wanted to do while they were here on this. And Marilyn had several things. So we 
So we made sure that that week that we were off, we did those things. Go on safari, you know, she wanted to do a teacher training and just a variety of things. Sunday before school started, um, she got sick Mm. and stayed at home. And uh, that night, she died of an aneurysm. Mm. Um, You expect it. I mean, you assume that you might die, but you never think that your friend Mm. of 30 years was going to die on the field. Mm. And there was a series of other things that happened, you know, just contacting the family, and um, it, it, it was not the most, it was one of the hardest things that I had to do. Yeah. Um, but then on the other hand, it was a great funeral. Mm. I mean, they gave her a dignitary's funeral. People came from all over the country and said, really? and just really, yes, it was it was amazing. Wow. Um, and the little kids, she had taught them a song at the at the school, and so they sang, and um, it was just very, very good. Wow. So now I know that uh, it's something like that will really, really rock you, and uh, yes, can can be a a tough thing. What was what were some of the things that maybe looking back now you can say, well, this is what God was doing in my life through this difficult storm? Well, one thing He teaches you is that you don't know the future; <laughs> He does. You don't. And Marilyn was doing what she wanted to do. She was touching lives even to the very end. Mm. And that's what I want to do. Yeah. You know, I want to be busy about the Lord. Yeah. Can I just tell you a little stupid story when I was a kid? Yes. I was in the little Okeechobee church, you know, that we, my dad had start, helped start. And um, the lady taught me how to play the piano. And so it was one of the first lessons. And I learned, we'll work till Jesus comes. That old hymn, mm-hmm. we'll work till Jesus comes. That was the only hymn I knew, and they didn't have a pianist. So <laughs> I played that song, probably not so well. And we sang everything to that tune until I learned another <laughs> one. So I guess that's my theme song. We'll work till Jesus comes. And that's what I want to do, whether it's here in Tanzania or wherever it is. Yeah. Wow. So you're, you're back now in the United States and uh, you haven't slowed down much, have you? No. Tell us, tell us what all is going on now in, in Pat's life as far as it goes okay. with serving the Lord. Okay. Well, I went back to Zambia to a different country. They needed somebody to fill in. Um, so I went there for six weeks. And um, then I wrote some curriculum for um, Rafiki wow. uh, for two years. And now I'm serving at McGregor. Um, I help in the youth. But I we kept asking me, do you think it, we don't have anybody for the clothes closet? It's been closed for about two years. Uh, do you think that would interest you? And, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I went and looked at the thing, and I thought, you know, this might be something I could do. Um, coming back to America was probably more difficult than going to Tanzania. How so? Um well, when you go to Target and you see all those colors, it's just like, uh, and you go to Publix and you see 12 different types of ketchup and you think, oh my goodness, I hope I make the right choice, you know, where in Tanzania you would go to the market and pick out a bucket of tomatoes and, you know, <laughs> um, and Africa is so, um, they depend on the Lord. Mm. You, they know what faith is. And here in America, a lot of times we get very comfortable and, you know, we have a paycheck and we have a roof over our house and we don't have to worry if it rains. And and then there was also a lot of variety. And um, so I missed the other cultures, you know. Um, So when Wade said, would you be interested in doing the clothes closet? I prayed about it and... 
I wasn't really sure, but yeah, I'll do that. And it has been the biggest blessing. It mm. really has been fun. Um, once again, we'll work till Jesus comes because these ladies that that were the volunteers when I first stepped into the position, they were 80 and even 90 years old, <laughs> and they had worked in the position for a long time. Wow, faithful servants nice. of God. And once again, let it be me, God. Mm. Let me serve until, be faithful like that. Um, we reopened the clothes closet in September and kind of wondered if anybody would come and what it was like, you know. And we opened and the people came, mm. little first. And now more and more, we get people from all over. Wow. We get people from Cuba, of course, and Cuba and um, Haiti, of course, uh, Mexico, Lithuania, mm. Venezuela, Nicaragua, um, just a variety of places. So it's like going going all over the world without leaving home. Right. You know, so it has been really wonderful. And the volunteers that are there, um, we have about 12 volunteers that work throughout the week. And uh, they're, it, they're just so much fun to be around. Um, they're really showing the love of Jesus, whether they're folding clothes or whether they're dealing with the people and helping them shop. Mm. So it has been a real blessing. It really is to have that back open. I know initially kind of COVID hit and everything mm -hmm. kind of closed, but then it wasn't able to reopen because there wasn't anybody to lead that. Right. And so really you responding to God's call in that area has been a huge blessing for that ministry, but obviously for the people that it ministers to. Oh, so that's, that's awesome. Now, if somebody's listening uh, says, hey, I didn't know we had a closed closet or hey, I might feel like I would want to do that. You got any room for anybody, any more volunteers? Oh, yes. My, <laughs> uh, you know, when you work in a ministry, you also get a vision. Hmm. And I would like to open the closed closet even longer. Right. Because so you could serve more people or another day, and yes, we have need for more sorters, which we sort on Tuesday. But if you can sort on Thursday, we'll open another day <laughs> to sort on Thursday. And you're going through. Uh, McGregor has been so generous. Mm. We have bags and bags. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> we have had bags and bags of clothes and. Um, I keep thinking, maybe we can try to outgive the Lord, you know, and so we're giving to other ministries. We're giving wow. to um, the homeless ministry so that they can pass on clothes. When the youth did their Saturday ministry to Immokalee, we gave them clothes for that. Yeah. Um, the ministry to those girls that are getting out of trafficking, fig leaf, mm -hmm. and out of into the Jordan, mm -hmm. we give clothes to them. Um, so we're trying to pass on yeah. the blessings. So you're ministering to people and to other organ ministry organizations. Yes. That's yes. wonderful, Pat. Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. So not only would there be opportunities for people to volunteer, but also all of our church members would be encouraged to, do to donate yes. uh, clothes. Now, somebody might be saying, well, where is the clothes closet? Oh, okay. Is it a literal closet somewhere in the corner of a building <laughs> that you go to? So it's not a closet, is it? It seems like it's pretty small <laughs> it's not, at times. You would like a bigger Yes, <laughs> yes. but uh, it's at the end, rear end of the property over by Studio G by the sports park yeah. or fellowship right before home. you head back into the the all the uh, fellowship, fellowship park, park and all the right. sports athletic fields yes. yeah and it says closed closet on the and it says closed closet it looks like an old uh portable for, portable or trailer yes. yeah building yeah. yes yeah and we're trying to up the look of it a little <laughs> bit um and there is like a little shed there that if we're not open you can donate at the back the they can just drop them in. Drop there. it in. It's on the yes. side, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And don't leave the clothes on the steps. No. <laughs> in case it rains. Yeah. Okay. So, so they had, there's 
opportunity for people to give as well as to come and, yes. and volunteer. And if they want to volunteer, they can just contact the church office and they'll, they'll route that call to the right person. And eventually they'll get that name to you so you can follow up with them. That would be great. That awesome. would be great. Awesome. Uh, I think I failed to mention, you mentioned a moment ago about donating for the student ministry when they went out to Immokalee, but uh, you're uh, one of your, one of those Swope boys, uh, <laughs> Kirk uh, Swope is on staff here. Yes, he and is. serving since uh, last fall he started. And so yes. we're grateful to to have him part of here and I know that's kind of neat you can you don't get I like, quote come to work together but you do get to see him around here some when you're up here volunteering yes I do yeah. and he comes over and bops in and I'll always have something for him to do <laughs> put, so put your boy to work <laughs> yeah very proud of him <laughs> yes and, and that he stepped out in faith too he did um, because you've got a young family and you're stepping out of a secure position a career into, that you've built pretty mm -hmm. pretty well there to mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. and if they're interested in hearing that story they can go to one of our previous podcasts, the Here at Home podcast, where I had Kirk on here, and we talked a little bit about that. And leave a good comment. And leave a good <laughs> comment. That's right. <laughs> well, I, is there anything else that you'd like to, to add to what God has shown you through this whole process? Because we'll, uh, we'll wrap up after that. Okay. Uh, if I could just share something from the clothes closet. Um, you know, it's not just giving out clothes. We pray with everybody that comes in. We give them a track, um, and you're really meeting needs because of their because of McGregor's generosity. We've been able to meet needs. We had a young mother of six kids, and she couldn't have been thirty. I don't I don't think she was thirty, and she had nothing, mm. nothing. We were able to give her a mattress and baby clothes and clothes for her family. And at the end, when we prayed for her, she could only speak Spanish, so she didn't know anything. She was just weeping mm. and crying. Another lady came in, and she says, I am i don't have enough money. I'm going on a job interview. I need a job. We were able to personally shop with her and fix her up with some interview clothes. Oh, wow. Um, and sometimes the guests surprise us, like... The one lady came in and she says, I've just been so blessed by this. She said, I would like to bless you. And I thought, oh, okay. So she took a few steps back. She took off her mask and she began to sing Amazing Grace. Oh, wow. Um, there are so many blessings when you serve. Mm. Get into serving. Mm. So it's a good word to end on, Pat. Thank you. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. That might be the, the show title. We'll work till Jesus comes. <laughs> that's because that's that's your been your mantra. Yes. yes. And what uh, oh. you really have lived missionally uh, in that way. Well, this wraps up another episode of Here at Home, and thank you so much, Pat, for being uh, being a part of this uh, Here at Home episode. And thank you, listeners. Also, we so appreciate you listening, and we're glad to be part of uh, season two now of Here at Home. And so. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and hit that like button. Leave a comment too, as Pat's left comments before on our previous podcast. So thank you all for listening. We'll see you in a couple of weeks right back here at home.